We Are Legally Sis. Welcome to our podcast. The information provided in the show is for general informational purposes only and should not be construed as legal advice on any subject matter. No attorney-client relationship is created between you and Duran and Duran Jules Law. Hi, welcome to Legal Assist. I'm Attorney Wen. And I'm Attorney March. Welcome to our podcast. In this episode, we will be discussing about VAUSI or violence against women and children and the potential legal remedies if you find yourself or your child in this situation. So this is a very sensitive issue, a topic, especially for women who are in an abusive relationship and also for those children who are in a toxic relationship or in a family abode. What is the intent of the law? So we have this RA-9262 or the Republic Act 9262, which is the anti-violence against women and children. And the intent of the law is to seek protection for the prevalent abuses that women and their children are experiencing. Are experiencing. So you talked about abuses. What types of abuses are covered under VAUSI? So there are four types of abuses that are covered with this VAUSI. So there are the physical abuse or the physical violence, the sexual violence, the psychological abuse or violence, and the economic abuse. So let's discuss them a little bit further. In physical violence, does it mean just one time or should it be repeated? So, well, when you say physical, this is necessarily entails the physical or the bodily harm that is inflicted upon the person and this is a series it covers a series of actions it's not only a one time i think physical violence and sexual violence are self-explanatory so let's just discuss about economic abuse and psychological abuse what falls under psychological abuse when you say psychological abuse these are the acts or the omissions that refers to the emotional or the psychological sufferings of the victim. So stalking. Yeah, that could be considered under psychological abuse. So when you say psychological abuse, this also includes those causing emotional or psychological harm upon the victim. That also includes stalking. Um, this also includes the substantial and the psychological stress or the distress that the woman faces yeah. or experiences will that include texting or any social media abuse against the child or the what well, if it causes a psychological distress to the woman that also covers that one so this the psychological abuse can also covers the situation wherein the partner is inflicting her upon himself and then um, for the purpose of controlling oneself or like manipulating. So for the example, person. the guy would say, I'll kill myself if you will separate with me. Yeah, that, that would fall under the psychological abuse because you're already manipulating the other person to stay within that relationship and that's an abuse. Okay. How about economic abuse? Does that cover a situation wherein the father does not give support to the child or the mother? Yes, um, that could be considered as an economic abuse, especially when the person or the woman is being financially dependent on that person. You mentioned that the VAUSI law would only cover women that are in a relationship or was in a relationship or was married, or they had a common child. So any third party, if the act is done, for example, there's an abuse by done by the third party, not in a relationship, not with a previous relationship, no, nothing. Does that fall under VAUSI? No, it doesn't fall for VAUSI. So VAUSI is a special law, specifically designed to protect women and their children who are in a dating relationship or in a sexual relationship or whether that women had a child with that person, whether the child is legitimate or illegitimate. When you find yourself in this situation as a woman or as a mother to a child, what is your recourse? 
So you have a recourse under the vow C law is to get a protection order. You can get this from the nearest barangay where you are actually residing. Yeah. Also, you can go to the court immediately for the temporary protection order and uh, the permanent protection order. But basically, first, you know, you have to protect yourself and then report the situation as much as possible to your immediate family or friends or who knows your situation. Report it to the police officers and to the barangay. Also, there are women desk around. So, in DSWT, so you can also seek um, help from that. Yeah, it's very important that you document any physical abuse, like take a picture, take a video, because if you file or if you're ready to file a case in court, uh, that can be used uh, in your favor. Yes, as an evidence. So when you file for a BPO or Barangay Protection Order, how long does it last? So it lasts only for 15 days. Well, that's short. Can it yes. be renewed? No, it cannot be renewed. So the next step that you should do is to file a temporary protection order before the family court, which is the regional trial court in the place where you are actually residing. So as soon as you file your case and the court sees that there is an immediate danger on yourself, they actually release as a TPO or the temporary protection order, it says. But this is only um effective for a period of 30 days but it's renewable who can file for a protection order so those persons who are definitely offended persons so these are the victims and the parents of these victims can also file for protection order on their behalf it could also include ascendants descendants or collateral relatives within the fourth degree of consanguinity so that means grandparents, first degree cousins. Yes, they can file on the behalf of the victim the protection order. Even if the victim refused to file a case? Yes. How about police officers? Yeah, police officers can also file on behalf of the victim as well as officers of the DSWT. Lawyers can also file on behalf of their clients. We have a number of questions coming from our website. Can I ask these, Attorney Wendy? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Yeah. My American husband hits my children a lot of times, and I decided to file a child abuse case against him. I also filed for a Vowsy case because he hurts and hits me as well. His sister asks that I just drop the case and promises to support my child, but it's been almost three years and he doesn't give me money. He stays in my rented house with me and my child. I don't have money to pay rent. What should I do? Well, obviously, you're in a situation where you are in an abusive relationship, abusive kind of relationship. So what you can do is get a protection order, just like we have discussed a while ago. So you have the BPO, Barangay Protection Order, the Temporary Protection Order, and the Permanent Protection Order in place, and which can help you eventually to... Protect yourself. It looks like in this question, she has already filed a Vowsy case, but uh, retracted it. Can she file a Vowsy case again? Yes, she can file a Vowsy case again. Okay. This is because if it's continuous, she faces economic abuse multiple times. Even if she has filed previously, there are new vow uh, economic new, abuse that she has yeah, new suffered. Of abuses. That can be a ground for a Bowsy case. Another question. I need protection. Can you help me apply for TPO? I'm being harassed many times by my old classmate through text messages, calls, survivors, sending me threats like he will destroy me by sending evidence to my husband and friends that we dated and had a short sexual relationship. So Bowsy covers also those persons who are in a dating relationship or sexual relationship, whether it has been current or um, in a former relationship. relationship. So if she is in a situation where they actually dated or had sexual relationship, yes, she can actually file a TPO you know, to protect herself as well. And 
Yeah. Again, it, if it's a barangay protection order, it will only last for 15 days. Yes, 15 days. So, so if she wants a permanent solution, she needs a lawyer and file yeah. her case. So what is a protection order? So protection order, this is an order issued by the government agency such as the barangay and the court seeking to prevent further imminent danger or further abuses uh, on the victims of the physical, psychological, emotional, and um, economic abuse against the women and the children. How about LGBTQ? Are LGBTQs protected under this VAUSI law? Yes, this also covers those female and female, female relationship, which is the lesbian. So lesbian. If these two females are in a relationship, that dating or sexual relationship, this is also covered by. So what if it's a man and a transgender, and the transgender is suffering from physical, emotional abuse? Is it covered also? What do you think? I don't think, I don't think that it's covered. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Because in several situations, the Supreme Court has declined the change of name or the change in gender, even if that person has already changed his name abroad or had a gender change abroad. Uh, the request to change or the request to reflect those changes in the Philippines are declined by the Supreme Court. Following that rule, then potentially. I would think, because, and also because the VAUSI is a special law, it would have to be strictly construed. Yeah. But I think that there is um, a bill that the Congress is proposing to include the LGBT community as well as those men in a relationship because men can also be subject of uh, abuse by their partners. Yeah. I have read in the news that the VAUSI cases has shot up during the quarantine period. There are a lot of women who are stuck at home or working from home because of the quarantine um, that they have been subject to a lot of abuse. But it can be also a cause of just because of the quarantine or because women are now using Bowsy as a tool to harass their spouse or ex-boyfriend also. Yes, so basically women can also actually... So if you find a client in that situation, what should the man do? Well, unfortunately, there is no law yet passed, from what I know, protecting men of this kind of abuse that are subject or under the VAUSI law. So for physical violence, men can file physical injury against their partners or their wife which is falling under the revised penal code for psychological or economic abuse that would be hard for example yeah. you turned the table you mentioned a while ago that if the husband would threaten to kill himself if the woman will separate from him then the woman can file a vowsy case against the man because of psychological abuse but what if it's the woman threatening to kill herself or the child Right. Can't, the man can't file for a vowsy case against them. Yes, but I think it's also high time for our Congress to actually take a look at this one. Because in other countries, in other developed countries, the violence against any persons or any victims, men are also protected. Men are covered in that situation. So it's only in the Philippines that they don't. Why do you think this, is only, this only covers the situations where there is a relationship or previous relationship or it's a common child why doesn't it cover third party abuses because there are situations or there are laws already in place for that one so when you say that another person saw um, a person being beat up or a child being beat up in the, in the street they can actually file a case against the parents of that child for a physical, physical, yeah, for yeah, physical, physical injury or abuse of children under special laws. Can a father file a case against the mom for physical or emotional abuse? If the man is in a situation where he is married mm -hmm. and that they have a child and that child is subject to an abuse by that mom, 
that parent or that father can actually file a protection order on behalf of their child. There's actually a recent case decided by the Supreme Court. Um, it's actually, you know, the jurisdiction was actually filed before the Taguig Court. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the father filed a protection order on behalf of his child saying that the child has been subjected to a, an abuse by the mom. And the trial court of the Taguig initially dismissed that, saying that the law is only protecting, protecting women, women from the abuses. But what the petitioner did is he immediately went to the Supreme Court and asked for a reversal of such decision by the RTC of the Taguig. And that the Supreme Court has decided and said that father can actually file a protection order on behalf of their child who is subject to abuse by the mother. So yeah, a father can definitely file a case against the mom to protect the interest of the child. Yes. All right. So, okay. Um, that sums up our discussion on Vausi. So if you have any other comments or questions, Please drop a line at our website, www.durantrolls.com. Bye! Bye!